following lecture was produced by Glorian Publishing, a nonprofit organization, and is one of hundreds of lectures freely available via download, podcasts, streaming radio, and transcription. These lectures range in topic and complexity in order to address the many needs of humanity. We invite you to browse our library of lectures, books, courses, and articles to find teachings that suit you. Through the support of donations, Glorian Publishing has published 40 books, hosts international retreats several times a year, offers free online courses, and many other valuable resources, available to anyone worldwide. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Your donations make it possible for this free public service to reach thousands of people every day. To make a tax-deductible donation in any amount, even anonymously, visit GnosticTeachings.org. Now, with heartfelt wishes for the end of suffering for all creatures, we begin the lecture. May all beings be happy. So the study of Kabbalah according to Judaism starts for, for, from Egypt, or even though the, the science of Kabbalah is ancient as the universe. But the master were, of course, teaching that in the third sub-race in Egypt, in order to deliver onto the fourth sub-race, which developed among the Greeks and uh, Romans, in Europe, the Kabbalah, because at that time it started the Kali Yuga, the Dark Age. And through the Kabbalah, the Dark Age was going to receive the special doctrine, knowledge, in order for the Western world to receive the doctrine that is hidden within the book of Genesis and all the books of the Bible, and uh, that roots are in the ancient religions. As we will see how uh, in the story of Genesis we find many archetypes related with Hinduism. And if we keep studying this book, we will find these archetypes also in other ancient religions. Older than Judaism and Christianity. So please understand that when we address these symbols, images, uh, we understand that they represent something. As when we find the, the, the letter yod He vav He are four letters that symbolize God, the Elohim. And as well with this uh, symbol of Brahma. As we explained in the previous lecture, the first world that is created, according to Kabbalah, is the world of Atziluth, which is a world, as we said many times, world of the archetypes. <coughs> and the head of the world of Atziluth is Kater, the Ancient of Days, which is related with the first triangle of the tree of life, which forms the Holy Trinity, Keter, Chokmah, Bina. And the world of Atziluth relates to ten emanations, which are visible, and three which are invisible. The three which are invisible are Ein, Ein Sof, and Ein Sof Or which you find above Keter in the tree of life. And the ten which are visible are the ten Sephiroth in the world of Atziluth, making 13 eons of light, 13 archetypes, which relate to the 13 heavens in the Nahua pantheon, as well as the, in the Mayan pantheon, because the 13 eons are very clear uh, described in the Nahua and Mayan pantheons. 
uh, of ancient America. Uh, religion older than all religions in the Aryan era because the Mayans uh, were the Atlanteans that uh, studied this Kabbalah and th that transmitted the Kabbalah to other religions in different manners. So the 13 eons of the world of Asiluth it's precisely the mystery that the great masters of the Zohar describe as the Shushana, and that in English is translated as lily. The water lily, which in Sanskrit is called lotus flower. This lotus flower, lily or rose, rosy cross, is a symbol of uh, these archetypes that the Zohar call Israel. If we look at the second graphic, we will find the gematria, the way in which in Kabbalah, numbers are associated with letters. That's why we insist that when we walk in this path, which is the fourth path, the path of the equilibrated human being, we force to study Kabbalah and alchemy. Not only in order to decipher the ancient messages given by ancient masters, but also in order to decipher the messages that we receive from the internal planes. If you read the second graphic, it is written, the 13 archetypes of light or 13 attributes of mercy of the world of Atziluth are summarized in the letters of the name Israel, written in full. Written in full means that if you take the letter Yod, the first letter of Israel, you have to spell it. Yod, Vav, Dalet. This is how you spell Yod in Hebrew. So the same with the rest of the letters of the name Israel. Each letter, as you know, has a number, a numerical value. We're not going to explain the numerical value of all the letters because you can find that easily in the internet. So the letter, uh, the spelling of the letter Yod makes the addition of 20. Shin, the addition of 360. R R Resh, 510. Aleph, 111. And Lamed, 74. If you want to make the addition of all of those numbers of the word Israel written in full, you make 1,075, which make the addition of 13. Here you find why Israel is a name uh, the lily, or the symbol of the lily, of the archetypes. And of course, if you make the addition of 13 in itself, gives you the number 4, which is the famous tetragrammaton. What? That's why the holy name of God is yod Hey vav Hey 4. Because in it is hidden also the name Israel. Now, before continue with this second graphic, let us go into the third. In order to, for you to see very clear why the lily is a symbol of all of this that we are talking about. The lily in, in Hebrew is written Shushana. You see in the left, the red letters, the letters 
that describe the name Shushana or Lily in Hebrew. And below you find the value of the letters. And making the addition, you find the number 661. Which making the addition of this number in itself makes the addition of 13. Which is related again with the 13 archetypes that we are mentioning here. Or the world of Atsiluth, the world of the light. And of course, 13 make the addition of 4 again. Here you find, in synthesis, according to Kabbalah, why it is said that Israel and the lily is the same. Kabbalistically, of course, is how we understand it. And why Israel is called the son, the firstborn of God. It refers, of course, of all of these archetypes that we find. And that's why Solomon the king wrote, Ani, which means I am, the chanting rose, the lily of the valleys, as a Shoshana among thorns, which means willpower. So is my love between children. So that's the way in which, when you know alchemy, you know that in order to exercise love, or to develop this love with 13 attributes of mercy, or compassion if you want, you need, of course, to know this mystery. This is how you discover the mystery of to be born again. Because with these letters is how the universe was created, with the 22 arcana, or the 22 mysteries. Remember that numbers are living entities. That in the beginning was the logos, or the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. This is the beginning with God. All things were made by him, or by the word. And without the word was not anything made that was made. This is what the book of John states. It says, in the word was life. And the life is the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. So the whole verse here is embracing the lily, the light, and the life. We are going to address the life. We are going to address the light and the word, which is the synthesis of the logos, Christ, which is not a person but a force. So here you find why Shoshana, the lily, is equal to Israel. And of course, if we return to the second graphic, we read, These 13 archetypes are also included and summarized in the letters of the name Abraham, written in full. Again, we made in the left the addition of all the letters, the spelling letters of the name uh, Abraham, and again we have the number 13 equals 4. That's why when we talk about Abraham, we're talking about Israel. Because within Abraham was Israel. And we are going to explain how Genesis explains that in a very Kabbalistic, cryptic manner. That only by knowing Kabbalah, you discover it. Now, <coughs> it is written, Abraham is Hesed, the Ruach Elohim, or Monad, which also applies to Tifereth, which is Israel. For each, Abraham and Israel names Sum 13, which sums for the Tetragrammaton, contained in the divine name yod He vav He. Now, the numerical value of yod he vav he written in full, again, meaning that you take the spelling of the letters yod he vav he 
and you make the addition, which is 45, which is equal to 9. This is how you work with life, because 9 is Yasod, the sexual force. So, 9, which is equal to the numerical value of Adam. Remember that Adam spells Aleph, Dalet, Mem. And the addition of all the letters is back 9. The scripture states that yod he vav he created Adam in his image, signifying Israel, the 13 attributes of mercy of the world of Atziluth. 13 equals to 4. Who existed in the divine thought or archetypical mind before creation of the world of Bria. When we said before creation means before the world of Bria. Because first is the world of Atziluth and then the world of creation which is the world of Bria. Afterwards, Adam, Israel, was created by Abraham in Yesod in the likeness and image of Elohim. How? Well, offspring, life, and the means of subsistence proceed from Tifereth, the heart. And the heart Tifereth is Israel. And Yasod, sex. Both symbolized by the letter Vav. The sixth letter Vav of the Hebrew alphabet spelled Vav, Aleph, Vav, which make the addition of 13. Which make the addition of 4, written in full. Which are in the middle column, the medulla of the Sephirotic tree of life, called in the scripture, my firstborn, even Israel, who nurtures all of the Sephiroth. So when we go into initiation, into this mystery of to be born again. Remember the Master Jesus says, you had to be born again by the water and the spirit. So Kabbalistically, water is written Mem Yod Mem Maim. If you observe Mem has a value of 40. Two times mem is 8 or 80, if you want. And the letter Aleph is 1. So that makes addition of 9. So, 9 is related with the letter mem. That is the 13th letter of the alphabet. Do you see that? This is not coincidence. Mem is precisely here the mysterious letter that hides the number 13 that in his spelling means 9, the Sephira Yesod. And of course, if we name the number 13, we explain and we understand <coughs> that all of these archetypes of Israel or we will say the 13 eons of light which we have in our superior monad are within the water, within the mem, because mem is 13 and mem relates to the number 9, which is water, which is the sexual waters of Genesis. Yes, what? In all the tree of life, in different worlds. So, think about that, understand it, because based on that we understand the lily, the Shoshana, with the mysterious 13 and 4. In the middle, we find the number 4, the cross. That's why it's called the Rossi cross also, because the cross symbolizes the four aspects of the lily. And in the middle, you find the five aspects that are related and that were added in the time of Babylon 
to the 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet. In order not to alter the 22 arcana, they add five more. These five more are called final letters, meaning that you find this final way at the end of any word. For instance, here in the right, you find the word sadi. And here is the word final sadi, which means that you will continue the stroke towards Yesod. Because Yesod is life. When you continue the stroke of the final letters, they go to Yesod. The letter Mem, for instance, here, has here in the very bottom of this uh, small flower in the center of the cross, which is called Men Final. So Men Final is always related with Yesod, as we explained, because the word water, Maim, relates to Yesod, the number nine. And we have final kaf, and final pe, and final nun. The five letters which are final, which relate with yesod. Because I said in our physical body, they go directly into yesod, is what we have to understand. Now, final in Hebrew is also called sof. That's why the letters are called in Hebrew sofit. Sof. And when we said sofit, sof, we understand the ain sof and the ain sof or, related with the absolute. So there you find the mystery of the five final letters in the center of the lily. Because each of those letters are related with certain alchemical elements that we have to work with in order to walk and to make light in the darkness. Because the title of the lecture is Let There Be Light. And the light was, says Genesis. When you understand the meaning of these words, you understand that it's not a light that was created in the past, neither in the future. It's in the eternal now. Let there be light means here and now. Light and consciousness is the same thing. Let there be light and there was light when you are making light. Light is Christ. He said, I am the light of the world. And is also the word to synthesize all the 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet, with which all the books of the Old Testament in the Bible were written. Without knowing the numerical value of the letters and the meaning of the words, we are lost. That's why uh, Darwin invented his dogma of evolution based on the law of evolution because he couldn't understand Genesis. And nobody understands it because in order to understand it, you need to know Kabbalah and alchemy. You need to be an alchemist. Everything is hidden in it. Now, that's why Master Jesus said in the next graphic, and why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow they not, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I said unto you that even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. That means Solomon, or the solely man, the solar man, is not arrayed, or oh, Solomon in this way, like one of those lilies. But if we take Kabbalistically, we understand that Jesus is talking about the water lily, the rosy cross. 
that encompasses all of the 13 attributes of mercy from the ancient of days, which is Keter inside of us. So the Zohar explains that cryptically also, because you know to know Kabbalah and to be a practical Kabbalist, alchemist, in order to understand what the Zohar is also stating in, in his pages. Let's see again into the book of Genesis, the beginning, as we explained in the previous lecture. Barashit Bera Elohim, the first words written in the Bible, which is translated as, in the beginning God created. But we explained that Bereshit means, but Rashi, the daughter of my head, Bara created Elohim. In other lectures, we explained that the word Elohim is divided in three aspects. The first two letters of El, Aleph, Lamed, represent Keter. The second letter, He, which means these, or Elle, also can be Ella, goddess. But Elle means the attributes of mercy within Chokhmah. Because Elle, Aleph, Lamed, He, means these in Hebrew. And when you read these, are talking about all of these 13 attributes of mercy within the name Israel in Chokhmah, which is the one that is going to bring them down. Remember that when we talk about Chokhmah, we say that he's the son, because Keter is the father, and Chokhmah is the son. And the son contains all the 13 attributes. That's why in Pisces Sophia it is explained that the incarnated Christ, that we named Jesus Christ, individual, particular, and each one of us, has the power to come from the very bottom of the 13th Ian from Malkut to the first, which is Ain. Or if you want to count in reverse, you will say Malkut is the first and Ain is the 13th. So Hohoma has that ability, but we have to incarnate it in order to develop all the 13 eons, which the book of Pisti Sophia explains very clear and beautifully. And we have it there. So <coughs> here we find how Maim or Maia, as we said, or Mary is the mother of Elohim. In Gnosticism, we know that Mary, Maia, Isis, Isis, Isoberta, Rea, Sibeles is just the symbol or the names of the abstract, absolute space called Ein Sof. In Kabbalah, it is not represented in images. But in Hinduism, it is represented in images. And this is what we have to understand. Because when we talk about creation, we talk about the world Bria. When we talk about the world Bria, we have to take into account the Lord Shiva, which is called the first begotten of creation. And of course, Shiva is the Holy Spirit, which is here in the right side. And his wife is Parvati. Parvati, in the astral aspect, gave birth to the Holy Trinity, which is represented that as Elohim. Because if Keter is El, 
if chokma is L and then Bina is Elohim or Elohim represented by the letter Mem and the letter Yad Bina that's why in the Zohar explains who created this or we will said who put this which is the attributes of Chokmah into the world of Bria who did it it was, did, it was done by who, which is written Mem Yad, me, which backward is ocean, water, sea, lake. So it's always obviously addressing the waters of the space, which is called Akasha. So from the world of Atsiluth, Shiva, the Holy Spirit, which is called Bina in Kabbalah, is the first begotten, is the first that appears in the world of Bria. With his wife, Parvati, according to Hinduism. And where we place this Shiva Shakti, or Shiva and Parvati, we place it, or we place them in that which is the Sephira, as you can see at the very bottom of these graphics, we find two trees of life. That is here precisely after the first triangle of the tree of life. In that we find the first chaos. The first chaos of the space. And of course here is where we find the union of Bina and the Divine Mother, Ava and Ima, which is called heaven and earth in the chaotic manner, according to Kabbalah. <coughs> so then you find that between Bina, the third Sephira, and the fourth, there is an abyss, which is called that, where the world of Bria begins, the world of creation. And uh, in that abyss is where we find the connection of the world of Atziluth with the world of Bria. In other words, the connection of the archetypes of the world of Atsiluth, the world of archetypes, into the world of Bria. That connection is between Bina and Hesed. Who is Hesed? Hesed is the Ruach Elohim. Many times we said that. That was working with the waters of Genesis in the beginning of creation. So when you talk about Hesed, the Holy Spirit, Bina, you have to understand that between them exist the 13 attributes because in the Zohar it's very well explained that Hesed is Abraham. Very well. And that Bina is yod Chava elohim or yod he vav he elohim So you find here the first Elohim and Hesed, the second Elohim. If you observe the graphic where you find the Divine Mother or, or Shiva with Parvati. In the right side of that graphic we wrote Jehovah Elohim in, in English and in Hebrew. And to the left of that graphic is again 
that graphic that we have in the first uh, graphic of this PDF, which is called Ruach Elohim. And beneath, we find the first letters or the first words in Hebrew that is translated as, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was formless and void, and darkness was upon the face of the abyss, and the Ruach Elohim, until there. Ruach Elohim is Chesed. It says that it was hovering upon the face of the waters. So, between the first Elohim written in the Bible and the second Elohim, you find 13 words exactly. So how to explain. This third, 13 words written between the first Elohim and the second Elohim refers to the 13 attributes of mercy, to the 13 archetype of Israel, which are transferred from the world of Atziluth, which is Elohim, into the world of Bria, that is controlled by the Ruach Elohim, Chesed. That's why I explained in the beginning that the 13 attributes of mercy are in the name Israel, which was created in the image of Elohim. Here we are explaining unto you that it's only in the image. Remember that when the man was created, it is written that the goddess of the sea asked to the Holy Spirit, let us now make the man into our image, into our likeness. So the first man that is created, which contains all of these 13 attributes that we name Israel, is made into the image of the Elohim, the world of Atziluth, image, which is called Zalem in Hebrew. The world of Bria is the one that has to create into the likeness. Likeness is the divine mother. Image is the father. So that's why we explain, all of us here, without any exception, have these 13 attributes of the image of God in our particular individual monad. In the depth, all of us have Israel, these 13 attributes. But if it's not by the work of Abraham, which is the Ruach Elohim, these 13 attributes will not be in activity. We have to put them in activity. Because all of those 13 attributes are, of course, related not only with our own particular monad, but also with the universe. That's the image of God. When you see the image, the light of Atziluth, you see all of the wonders of the universe. And they are related with the 13 heavens. But if we want to make a likeness of that in us, then the image has to come down and make that likeness in us. And that is what to be born again. With the light and with the life. That's why you find that. Now, after the Ruach Elohim, it is stated, and the Ruach Elohim was hovering upon the face of the water and said... If you read in Hebrew, are only five. Only five words after Ruach Elohim. The Sohar explains this very clearly when you know Kabbalah in this way. The five leaves of the lily, which are in the center, relate to Geburah, Tiferet, 
Netzach, Hod, and Yesod. Those are the five. Because when you talk about the men made into the likeness, listen carefully, not into the image, into the likeness of Elohim, we have to talk about the second triangle and the third triangle, which makes six. Six Sephiroth. But since we are talking about the Ruach Elohim, which is Hesed, Ruach Elohim is the one that works with one, two, three, four, five leaves of the lily inside of us. In it, we had to create the astral body, the mental body, the causal body, and fortify the consciousness in Yesod. We are approaching only the first day in order for us to understand what is to be born again. To be born again is first to make light. That is the first step. It's not by believing in Jesus that we are going to be born again. Or by belonging to this or that religion or this philosophy school or another's philosophy school. It's by working alchemy with us with those 13 attributes of Israel which are related, as we explained, with the heart and with the sex. That form the word Vav. That's why when we talk about the man, we talk about Yesod and about Tifereth as well. And that's why in Tifereth we play Israel with all of those 13 attributes that we are talking about, which are the 13 eons of light that each one of us has to develop. So, it is stated, and the Ruach Elohim was hovering above the face of the waters. Waters relate to Yesod, the sexual genetic waters. Is above. Because through the water is how we work. And remember that Yesod, if we count the seven main sephirah that represents the man from Hesed to Malkut, Yesod is the sixth. That's why the book of Genesis started. Let us now make the man into our likeness and to our image in the sixth day. Because the man here works through Yesod. That's why the world of Yesod is represented by a man, naked man. And of course, that work that we are talking about here has to be done through Malkut. Because if Yasad is a man, Malkut is a female. It's what we call in Kabbalah the Shabbat, or the seventh Sephirah, from, Ket, from Hesed down. That's why the seventh Sephirah Malkut ask to Yasad, let us now make the man into our likeness, into our image. What man is talking about? The man of Bria, of course. Because the one that falls into sin is the man of Bria, Adam of Bria. The first man that we talk about related with Atziluth, that contains only 13 archetypes of light, never falls. Because contains the pure light of heaven. The one that falls is the, world, is the man of Bria, which is made into the likeness. One thing is the man into the likeness, and another thing is the man into the image. All of us have the man into the image inside, which is our monad, with all of the 13 attributes in potency. And if that monad wants to create that man into the likeness, has to descend to float above the waters of Yesod and rest his work in the seventh day. That's why the seventh day and the sixth day are together, talking about the creation. 
the water and the spirit. Remember that Jesus said we need to be born by water and the spirit. And the Ruach is the spirit. Ruach Elohim, the spirit of God, is our own particular monad. Which is the other aspect of Brahma in Hinduism? So now, understanding this, <coughs> we find the next graphic after Bereshit Vera Elohim. We find the heavens and the earth, and the earth was formless and void. We find that a nebula. Because in the universe, a formless matter is in heaven. When you read in Genesis, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was formless and void, it refers to the matter. As you find here, it's chaotic. But heaven and earth are together. Is what in Greek mythology is called chaos and Gaia or Uranus in Roman terms. Uranus and Gaia. Today is the 4th of February, the beginning of another year of the, in the constellation of Uranus, the era of Aquarius which relates to that. Because when you see Aquarius, aqua areas, the superior water in the air, the Akasha, where we find the heavens and the earth and the earth formless and void. And this is how we all have that force. Because in heaven and in earth, are the 13, as you see, attributes. Because those are the words between the first Elohim and the second Elohim written in the book of Genesis. So this is how we are, in other words, with our attributes or archetypes, formless and void. And the next graphic says, And darkness was upon the face of the deep. Or upon the face of the water. Shiva, as well as Krishna, is always dark. Because this is how we have it inside. In the same way that the charcoal contains the fire and the light that can illuminate us. In the same way, darkness is upon the face of our abyss our own waters. And that's why Shiva is there, which is, represents the Holy Spirit. Bina. Or in other words, yod he vav he Elohim. In the first chaos, called Da'at, because in Kabbalah, in the tree of life, the first chaos is Da'at. And that is controlled by Shiva and Parvati. Where is Parvati there in this graphic? Parvati are the waters, which always represents the female aspect. And Shiva is a masculine aspect. Through these waters and this spirit, which is called Shiva, will Chochma descend into the world of Bria. Will the 13 attributes of mercy to descend into the world of Bria? Is Jesus Christ to be born in the man? This is how you see it, Kabbalistically. Now the next graphic says, what the Master Samael explains in the three mountains. The second fire makes the waters of life fertile in order for the master to be born within us. The master has to be born within us to be born again. 
Or in other words, let us make Adam into our likeness, into our image. That is, the birth of the master inside, which means to start putting into activity the 13 attributes of God, or the Shoshana. Certainly, every angel is a child of the Divine Mother Kundalini. Really, she is virginal before, during, and after childbirth. Because it is through chastity how we build that inside of us. Remember that the Divine Mother Kundalini relates to Yesod, Tetis, the waters of Yesod. Down. In the name of truth, we solemnly affirm the following. The third Logos, the Holy Spirit, Shiva, Bina, is the first begotten of creation. Our inner individual monad, or more correctly, our superior individual monad, who is the husband of Devi Kundalini, our particular cosmic mother. This is what Samael on Beor stated in the Three Mountains. He addressed here the superior monad, meaning that Shiva, the Holy Spirit, contains the Holy Trinity within himself and is individual, particular in each one of us. Because the child of that Holy Spirit, of that Shiva, is the Ruach Elohim. That is called Abraham in the Bible. So the child of, uh, uh, of Jehovah Elohim is Abraham. Or as we say it in Hinduism, the child of the Holy Trinity is Brahma. That is represented by, in the next graphic you see, Vishnu. Why is it represented by Vishnu? Because Vishnu, Shiva, and Kater, or Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, are one. But Vishnu represents the universe. The multiplicity of the unity. Vishnu, the Christ, is universal. But from that emanates the navel that you see here, where we find Brahma. And Brahma, in this case, coming out of the navel of Vishnu, represents our own particular Abraham or Brahma. That's why the Bible says, And the spirit of Elohim hovered upon the face of the waters. Here we find Vishnu with his wife, which is called Lakshmi. Shiva has his wife, whose name is Parvati. But the wife of Vishnu is Lakshmi. And how do you name the wife of Brahma? Sarasvati. Here is something very beautiful. And you see how from Hinduism goes into Egypt and then into Israel all these archetypes and change the names in different ways. The way that you write Abraham by mixing the letters, you will write Brahma with the same letters. The wife of Abraham was Sarah. In the beginning was called Sarai, which means prison, princess. The wife of Brahma is called Sarah, Sarasvati. Is that coincidence? No. It's the same archetypes, symbolized in different ways. One is Sanskrit and the other is Hebrew. Brahma and Sarasvati, Abraham and Sarah. Very easy to see. And that's why in the graphic uh, that we were explaining, we put the Ruach Elohim, who is a child of Jehovah Elohim. If you want to see who is Jehovah Elohim in us, it's Bina, the Holy Spirit, that represents the Holy Trinity in us. And who is the Ruach Elohim in us? It is our own particular monad. 
which is called Brahma in Sanskrit, in Hinduism. But in Kabbalah, his name is Abraham. Because Abraham represents Chesed, according to the Zohar. And Elohim said, let there be light. And there was light. In order to make the master inside of us, in order for the master to be born inside of us, the 13 attributes of light have to organize and to make light within us. In other words, it is through the Ruach Elohim that the light is made. Remember that it says, and the Ruach Elohim was hovering upon the face of the waters, and Elohim said, let there be light. But when you said, and Elohim said, let there be light, in this word Elohim, you are pointing Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in Bina. And also the Ruach Elohim, which is Hesed. In this way, you form the four faces of Brahma. The four faces of Brahma is Hesed. And the other three faces of Brahma are Keter, Chokma, Bina, which form the Elohim that we are talking here. That's why we stated, when you name Chesed Brahma, you have to unite the Holy Trinity above with him. Four faces. And between the first triangle and Chesed, you find the 13 attributes of light, which sum four, which is the famous tetragrammaton. This is the mystery. That's why when you said, let there be light, means to awake Sarasvati within us. Remember, it is written in the Bible, Abraham descended to Egypt with his wife in order to be initiated in the minor and major mysteries. That dissension of Abraham means the dissension of the Ruach Elohim upon the face of the waters. Because Egypt is called Mazrahim, has the two members of the water. And the middle word means the land between the waters, which is Malkut. In order to work with alchemy. In order to make light in the darkness. And that implies, of course, the activity of male-female. That's why Adam needed Hava, Eve, in order to create light. Because in order to make this work, you have to receive the knowledge of the, of the signs of, of the tree of good and evil, which is sex. But remember, we are talking about creating the man into the likeness. The man into the likeness had the option when it goes to sex to transmute or to fornicate, to be in good or to be in evil. It's up to us. And that's why the serpent appears there that represents the sense of touch in our physical body. Through the sense of touch is how Adam knew Eve. This is how the man knows the woman. Because through the sense of touch is how we perform the sexual act. And then we enter and see the fruits of the tree of good and evil. If we transmute the energy of the tree of good and evil, the tree of knowledge, then we develop knowledge. We receive knowledge. The master is born, but inside. Because the first initiation of major mysteries 
is when we awake the Kundalini in Malkut. When we start working with the generations of the heavens and the earth in us, here we quoted in the next graphic the second chapter of the book of Genesis. When it is written, these are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created in the day that Jehovah Elohim made earth and heavens. A very cryptic message there. We explain that these refer to the 13 attributes of mercy. These are all the elements of Israel. These are Israel, the generations of the heavens and the earth. And after that is translated, when they were created. How do you say that in Hebrew? Behibaram. Behibaram. When they were created. But if you play with the letters Behibaram, you write by Abraham. But if you modify more that, you can say it also, by Brahma were created. But Brahma is the creator according to Hinduism. You see, if you read, these are the generations of the heavens and the earth, by Brahma or by Abraham, it's the same thing. Because Brahma is our own particular monad, and Abraham also represents Chesed. And the heavens and the earth, of course, represents to the five aspects of the lily in the center, heaven, and the earth, the seven sephira, which is Malkut. Because this is how we work. When we are working with alchemy, making light in the darkness, remember that Jesus Christ said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never be in darkness. But that light is Christ, the 13 attributes of mercy, or the 13 eons that the of Sophia talks about, that we have to develop. And then light is made in us, and we follow the first date of Genesis. And that's why when the Kundalini awakes in an extra graphic, you find the graphic of Sarasvati, the Divine Mother, the wife of Brahma, or we will say it in other words, Sarah, the wife of Abraham, awakes within us, and then she gives birth to Isaac, which is that part of us that will start creating the man because Isaac represents Gebura in Kabbalah. If Abraham represents Hesed, uh, Isaac represents Gebura. And that's precisely the first birth of to be born again that we have to create inside of us. That's why it says, and Elohim saw the light that it was good. That light is the light of the Kundalini in Sanskrit. Sarasvati. This is how from the coccyx, the church of Ephesus, the chakra muladhara, the light, the feminine light of Malkut, which is called Sara, or in this case Sarasvati, goes up and is united or becomes united with, with Brahma, with the monad. When that happens, then Sarasvati is placed in Chokhmah.
The next graphic, it is written, And Elohim divided the light from the darkness. And Elohim called the light, called the light day, and the darkness he called it night. And there was the evening, and there was the morning, the first day. Who is the evening? The woman. Who is the day? The man. Day and night make the first day together when they do not fornicate. Because when in the sexual act there is fornication, and then the day is in one side and the night is in the other side. But when we transmute the sexual force in Yesod, both day and night become one. As Genesis explained, and the evening and the morning, the first day. You see? United. We have to unite the two forces. As we said in Kabbalah, the right of the tree of life and the left of the tree of life. The right of the tree of life is good, light, and the left is darkness. But from the darkness, we make light. This is how we create the master within. Because this alchemical work has to be combined with the comprehension of our defects and vices that we have in the left. In the darkness. The consciousness, which is light, is hidden within those elements. And that we need to make light. See the last graphic of the tree of life. We always explain that Geburah is in the left side. When we talk about darkness, the graphic that we show you there, we put Bina in darkness. It says, and darkness was upon the face of the abyss. Darkness is Bina, the Holy Spirit. Because from him we take the light. Bina, the Holy Spirit, is the maker of light in us. That's why it is at the very top of the left side of the tree of life. And that's why Bina is ruled by Saturn. And the color of Saturn is black. And also violet. Violet, in this case, the purple is the color of the Divine Mother in Bina. If you want to represent the Divine Mother in Bina, Aima Elohim, Parvati, the wife of Shiva, and then it's with purple, with violet, as well as Shiva, that they represent the darkness from where we can, we can take the light. And of course, Beneath Bina is Gebura, which is the divine consciousness, where the 13 attributes has to be placed when we put them into activity. Remember, in Hesed, Abraham are the 13 attributes of Israel, which represent the 13 eons of Atziluth. When we work in this way of alchemy, with Malkut, the first serpent called physical body goes directly to Geburah because Malkut is just an extension of Geburah. When we talk about Malkut, we always say is united with the left column because the right column goes only into Yesod. In other words, Abraham in Chokmah goes into Yesod, the sexual energy, the male. But the female goes down into Malkut, which is Bina Gebura Hod. That's why when we rise, the light, the fire in the physical body, which is called Kundalini, all of that light develops in Gebura goes to Geburah, the divine consciousness. 
because only in Gebura we can find the 13 individual particular attributes of any master that is born for the first time, in the first initiation of your mysteries. It will be absurd if when we make the light of the Kundalini in the first initiation to leave the 13 eons in Malkut, in our physical body. Just imagine that the light is being born and all of those divine 13 attributes are developed with the first serpent, Kundalini, and they will remain in the physical body. What will be do, or what will be do, with 13 attributes of light? With the ego as we have it. Very fat. That will be the first appearance of fornicator gods. Because the ego is a fornicator. Anger, pride, vanity, and all those egos that we have within, with the 13 attributes, will make that, that light will shine in your anger, will shine in your pride, in your lust, in your vanity, in your gluttony, in your laziness. But God knows. That's why he separated that light from us, the darkness, in this case. And placed the 13 attributes in Gebura. That's why Master Samael explains very clearly in his books that the first initiation of Mayor Mysteries is absorbed by Gebura. Because Malkut is just an extension of Gebura. But Malkut is a fallen Sephira. It's us. And we start rising again. And then that light goes into our divine consciousness. In other words, this is called Winiver. Helen, the divine consciousness. Called Buddhi in Sanskrit. That's why when you continue with the days of Genesis... Or in this process of being born again, your goal is to unite the consciousness which is trapped in the ego, to liberate it, and to unite it with Geburah, with the divine consciousness. Called Neshama in Hebrew. The divine soul, Neshama. It's above. Matthew Samael explains in the book of Kabbalah that Neshama, the divine soul, Gebura, we have just an embryo of soul, part of it, which is called the Buddhatu or the Buddhata, the essence that we have within. It's part of that. Now you explain why when the Buddhata here in this physical world rises the first serpent, since the Buddhata is part of Gebura, Gebura absorbs that. Because up there, Gebura is pure and retains those 13 attributes. Later on, we can share those 13 attributes in different levels. Because that is the birth of the master. The birth of the master means that the 13 attributes of light of the world of Atiluth will shine in Gebura. And within Gebura is Chesed, Abraham. So that, this is how Isaac becomes one with Abraham inside of us in the biblical manner. And this is how the creation of the master begins. It's the first initiation. It's just the first step and to be born again by the water and the spirit. So this birth, as you can see, encompasses God. That's why it is written, and God said. Many beginners ask that if they can uh, reach initiations through alchemy, by the clues that we are giving now 
freely in the internet and to the books of the Matzah Samael on Veor, if they can be born as masters of the first day in the internal planes, and uh, the answer is, the one that is being born as a master in the internal planes is Chesed, together with Geburah. It's not the person down here. The person down here has all the elements that the Ruach Elohim needs in order to build that. That's why it's written that the Ruach Elohim was floating upon the face of the waters. Moreover, when you search in the Bible for the word, let's see the graphic of the man and the woman making light. And it says, and Elohim said, let there be light, and there was light. See the graphic. See the first word to the right in Hebrew. Ve'i amar. Means, and said Elohim. Ve'i amar, amar, and said. Look Kabbalistically with your spiritual eyes. And you will see that the letter Vav in Hebrew, in Kabbalah, makes the sounds O, because there is no vowels in Hebrew alphabet. Vav makes the sounds O. Yod makes the sound I. In Aleph, the sounds A. I, A, O. You see how it's hidden? The mantra, the main mantra is hidden there. E A O. And you can find it also here. E A O. In all of those, let there be light and there was light, you find that mantra Iao three times. Just by seeing there, you said, oh, that's the mantra. Ah relates with the lungs. Ah relates with the spirit, the ruach. When you breathe through your nose, it goes into your lungs. And from the lungs, it goes into the heart. From here, in the root of your nose, between your eyebrows, is the sound of yad. E, e, e. When the air penetrates there, that E, which is Keter, because the letter Yad represents Keter, because the letter Yad is 10, represents the 10th Sephiroth. So that letter Yad, when entering through your lungs, becomes the letter Aleph, which is three Yads together. The letter Aleph is made by three Yads together. So it is the Holy Trinity, or what the Master Samael explains, the three breaths of Akasha. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit that descend through the root of your nose into your lungs. And that Aleph, where we find the E, A, is going to go into your heart as purified war, uh, blood. Making the sounds E A O. O is the mantra, the vowel that vibrates in the heart, but also vibrates in your genitalia. E A O O vibrates also in the sex. That's why when you said O from the sexual force, the energy goes up. Through Vav, the spinal column, and descends into your heart. That's the traveling of the vowel O, which relates to the letter Vav. That's why the letter Vav represents the staff of the patriarchs. Because that staff of the patriarchs is the spinal column. And this is how the Ruach Elohim transmutes the sexual force to the heart. E-A-O. So O 
is the vow. Remember that, that unites the assault with the heart. I told you before that. How does that vav written with Aleph in the middle, spelling, unites sex with the heart? It does it through the letter Aleph, which is A. Because thanks to Aleph, the 13 attributes of mercy that enter through your nose go into your heart and from the heart to your sex. And when you transmute from the sex to your heart, to your head. That's why the mantra Ia'o, which represents the Holy Trinity, is the most powerful mantra that you can vocalize in the sexual act. But you have to understand that you are working with the 13 attributes of mercy, which are in Atziluth, and which are connected to Abraham, the Ruach Elohim. If you are not concentrated in your Ruach Elohim, your own monad, your own Abraham, how are those 13 attributes going to work in you? It's not just being there in the sexual act and avoiding the spasm or the orgasm of the animals. You have to be connected you had to remember God. You had to remember Brahma. You had to remember the Lord. And that's why the other two letters, which are here in Ve i Amar, which is Mem and Resh, in Aramaic, Mare means the Lord or means Lord. So Mare, Lord Iao. And who is Iao? Iao is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Iao is Keter Chokmah Bina, the Lord. And in your monad, that Iao is Brahma, Chesed, Abraham, Gebura, and Tifereth, the Holy Trimurti that makes our own monad. Because remember that individually speaking, the monad is a trimurti of spirit, divine soul, and human soul. So you have to be united there. You have to remember God in the sexual act. You have to make of the sexual act a ceremony. Because there is when you face the Elohim. El is God. Ela is goddess. Im in the water is how El and Ela are one. Elohim. So when men and women are united in the sexual act, they are making an Elohim between the two. And these two Elohim have to say, and Elohim said, they represent that below, but the one that is saying that is above. And Elohim said, let there be light. So you have to say, how the Elohim made the light? By E-A-O. 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 Three times you find in that and Elohim said, let there be light, and there was light. The Sohar explains. And Elohim said, let there be light. Is the man. Is the male. Is the superior part. And there was light. Is the female. That's why it's written. And Elohim said, let there be light. And there was light. The male and female. In the sexual act. Because if you said, and Elohim said, let there be light. Just by yourself. With your pranayama. You can make a little bit of light like a little candle. But if, and there was light, if there's a woman there, and then willpower develops the light. Because the woman gives to the man the other side, as well as men to the woman, and the woman to the man. So you see the powerful mantra Iao? 
But I repeat, if you forget your Divine Mother, who is let there be light, I mean, and there was light, because the Father in you is let there be light. And the woman together, and there was light. Because the Kundalini is the outcome of the two polarities. The Kundalini doesn't awake if we are not working with the famous and mysterious letter Vav. The heart and sex. Sex and heart. And the brain, which is the letter Yad. I -A -O. And this is how we begin to be born again by the water and the spirit as Master Jesus says again because we are already born in the physical plane as human beings but to be born in the fire and in the light is a matter of transmuting the sexual force So that is the first day. And that's the mantra. Yao. Written in the Bible. This is how we are being born again. We're taking care of our heart. And our sex. And our brain. That's why we have three brains. Because we have e -A -O inside of us. Do you have questions? The difference between the different aspects of the Divine Mother, in other words. Because the Divine Mother has five aspects. And we all, all only name here three related with the Holy Trinity. Parvati, which is the wife of Shiva, is the one that works in the darkness in order to make the light. But when the light... Oh, when Parvati and Shiva walk through Brahma, which is the Holy Spirit, uh, Hesed, the Ruach Elohim, then Sarasvati awakes within us. Because Sarasvati is the wife of Brahma. And Brahma represents our own particular monad. That is Sarai and Abraham. But Parvati is, of course, related with the superior part of the monad. And Vishnu with Lakshmi is the aspect of the Divine Mother with Christ. It's an aspect of the light. Because Vishnu is not individual in us. In us, Shiva is individual. In us, Keter is individual. But we go to Vishnu, even when Bina and Keter are within this second aspect, is universal. And this is only possible to understand when you meditate in Vishnu, or in Chokmah, or in the Son, the Christ, whatever name you want to give it in any religion. I speak from my own direct experience. When I meditated in my own particular Keter, I discovered that it's individual in me. When I meditated in Bina, the Holy Spirit, I discovered that it is individual in me. In Hesed as well, which is the monad. That's in the individuality in each one of us. But when I concentrated always in different aspects, in Chokmah, which is called Vishnu in India, it is not individual. It's many. It depends in which, uh, in which way are you concentrated in. If I concentrate in the Master Samael on the or in Vishnu, then I experience that I am the Master Samael on the or. If I, one time, for instance, I was concentrated in, in Jiro Krishnamurti. Jiro Krishnamurti 
is already a monad that is being one with Vishnu, with Glorian. It's in his own development. So when I was concentrated in him, all of a sudden when I entered into ecstasy, I was Jiru Krishnamurti. And I was seated there explaining and talking like him. When I returned, he says, but this is not possible because he died a few years ago and I was alive when he was. So how come I am Jiru Krishnamurti? Now I understood. I enter into the world of Chokhmah where Vishnu is one. That's why when Arjuna asked Krishna, who represents Vishnu, show us your universal form. And then Krishna, who is Vishnu, represents universal form with many faces. Avalokiteshvara, with many hands and faces. That is Vishnu. And that's why Lakshmi, the wife of Vishnu, represents that universality. And that's why from the navel of Vishnu comes Brahma. Because we are connected through the ray that we belong to, to the universe of Christ. Which is, you understand that, right? And this is how when you meditate on the Divine Mother, only through meditation is how you understand what the Divine Mother is in you, in the universe, and in your monad. Of course, there are all the aspects of the Divine Mother, which in Hinduism is called Kali. Well, Kali is the ruler of this Kali Yuga. And Kali represents the Divine Mother death when you annihilate the ego. But represents also the Divine Mother aspect of the black magicians. Durga also is another aspect of the Divine Mother. In any aspect, we have to work with her positively. But begin with the wife of Brahma, which is Sarasvati which means essence of being. The essence of your being is in the sexual force. That's the wife of Sarasvati. Um, now, and there was light would be the feminine, right? Yeah. And the Malkuth or the physical body, and let there be light would be uh, the sex or the masculine. Let there be light is Yesod. The forces of Yesod working through the monad, and the monad working through Kater. This is how you have to see it. You know, from the thirteen attributes or eons from Kater, because Kater is represented by thirteen curls of hair. So he has all the thirteen attributes. He is a perfect man, made into the image. But those 13 attributes are connected to Abraham, which is Hesed. And Abraham is the Ruach Elohim that floats on, upon the face of Yesod. So when the Ruach Elohim in, upon the face of Yesod, the waters of sexuality, in the sexual act, connect those 13 attributes that come from above to your physicality, and then they enter into the divine soul through the first initiation. And then the master of major mysteries, the first master of the Mahamambantara, is being born. Yes? So, um, that's, and that all takes place in Bria, basically, right? Because it's the creation. Yeah, we are talking about the men of Bria, the men of, the men of creation, the men related with the Divine Mother. The duality exists. His question is, does this duality of Bria, good and evil, exist in the world of Atsiluth as well? The answer is, the duality exists, but not at good and evil. Good and evil, right and wrong, only from Bria down. But the duality of Atziluth is also the Divine Mother and the Father, who are light. 
but there is not duality there as opposites, but united. It's what we call Elohim. It's called Jehovah Elohim, right? Which is pure. Now, from Bria down, then the duality comes from good and evil, where the man of Bria can fall. The man of Asiluth never falls. It's always pure. It's the man of Asiluth is man into the image. The man of Bria is man into the image and likeness. Because in order to make the likeness, you need the image. Hmm? So behold that. The man of Bria, creation, likeness, and image. But the world of Asiluth is only in the image, which is pure light. The goal is to return into Asiluth and to the Absolute. But for that, we have to go beyond good and evil. As long as we are in Bria, we are always submitted to the duality of good and evil. Demons are born in Bria. Another question? Mm -hmm. How does that relate to what you just said? That the allowed creation. That, yeah, well, that the darkness basically, you can't have Well, the if we talk about the devil, uh, you mean Satan. You mean Lucifer. Or talking that serpent that relates to the sexual force. That means that the, uh, uh, that devil, in, in this sense, we're not talking about the ego here. Right. right? We're talking about this part of the Logos who enters into activity in creation because it's an uh, indispensable archetype that needs to be active in Bria in order for the men of creation of Bria to emerge, which is knowing good and evil. Okay? Because this element called Lucifer or Satan in the Bible is a tempter, is a mentor that has to show you your weakness in order for you to develop. Without Lucifer, without the tempter, it's impossible for the men of Bria to come, right? Who will be knowing good and evil like Elohim that knows good and evil. But uh, obviously, if the man or that uh, element doesn't know a lot of good and evil, and then he trumps and sink it into evil. Our duty is to come out of evil in order to go beyond good and evil by the light or through the light by working with the 13 uh, eons in different steps. This is, just, this is just the first step that is written by Moses or indicated by Moses and in the Sohar, which is, of course, was closed secret but now is open why because this humanity will disappear sooner or later you know that we, you have another question here is it correct to say that the father is Keter, Tifereth is the son. Yes, it's correct, because the Holy Trinity of the world of Atziluth take control of the three triangles of the tree of life. The first triangle, Keter Mabina, is controlled by Keter. The second triangle, Chesed Geburah Tifereth, is controlled by Chochmah, which is the son. And the third triangle, which is the triangle of priesthood, which is Netzach, Hod, and Yesod, is controlled by the Holy Spirit in Yesod. So in Yesod is the Holy Spirit. And in Tifereth is the Son, and in Keter is the Father. Related with the three brains of us, of all of us. In this case, we will say that the feminine aspect of this trinity is our physical body, Malkut. 
which is feminine. Another question? The what? Breathing. The the breathing circle. I had to. I need an explanation of what he was talking about. Okay. About the breathing circle. If we are the image, what in us is that image? Give an example that's obvious to the human. Well, if we are the image, give us an example in order to see where that image is. It's not in the physical body. Is not in the vital body, is not in the astral, in the mind, it is in the spirit. That is the image. It is Hesed. That is the image. But this 13 eons or 13 attributes of mercy of Keter are in Abraham, in Hesed, in Brahma, in potentiality. It means our own spirit. That's why I insist in the sexual act. If you want to put those attributes in activity, you have to remember that the Ruach Elohim is the one that is floating above the waters of the sex, Yesod. If you forget that, and then the one that is doing the work is the devil, not God. So this is why you have to remember, because who is the devil? Well, uh, you are the devil. I am the devil with the ego alive. So, those attributes of light are within. When the humanity and any religion prays to God and wants to be in contact with it or with him or with she, whatever you want to call that which is God, it does it through the 13 attributes of mercy. Whether you practice Buddhism, Christianity, Islam, whatever, those 13 attributes are within. And when you are remembering God, you are in contact with those 13 attributes. Now, to put them into activity is a matter of alchemy. But you can put in, uh, into union with them also through meditation. Through meditation, in ecstasy, in a samadhi, you can be in contact with these 13 attributes. Because everybody has them inside. And they are the 13 attributes that are connected to Christ, which is the Son. The superior aspect, what the master called the superior monad. If those 13 attributes descend into us, then it will make of us an Elohim. And that's the path of the cross written in the four Gospels. How do you reach those inner states of meditation? How do we? How do we reach those inner states in meditation? By meditating. You have to sit down and to follow the rules which are uh, written in the different lectures already given in the radio. We have that. You have to, to be in contact of the 13 attributes of mercy. First, you have to quiet your physical body. Relax it. You have to relax your emotions as well in your mind. When the mind is in silence, when the emotions are quiet, and your body is completely relaxed, then the essence that belongs to Geburah and Geburah to Hesed can experience those 13 attributes because within Hesed are these 13 attributes in potentiality and united with the rest of the monad above. Why is the, what is the difference between image and likeness? Well, let's see. Image relates to the 13 attributes and relates to the monad. Every one of us has his own spirit, his own monad. That is the man made into the image of God. That's why Hesed is called El, the Ruach Elohim. And El in is God in Hebrew. That also a particular L. This L inside of us has a 13 attributes because he is the man made into the image of God. When that man is made and then God wants to finish his creation 
And he finished his creation with the seventh day, which means in Malkut. And when that image or that light, which is above in the spirit, will come down and shine through you. When that light is shining through you, you are the man made into the likeness. For instance, Moses, a man made into the likeness. Jesus, a man made into the likeness. But the one that made that man into the likeness was Hesed, the Ruach Elohim, that took the image in order to do it. For instance, a painter, when he is the, has the canvas there in front of him, is nothing there. He uses his imagination, the image. Imagination, image. In order to make the likeness that he's seen in his clairvoyant, in his mind, into the canvas, on the canvas. When the canvas and the painting is done, then the painter says, Behold here the likeness of my image, which I have in my head. So, in this way, the canvas will show the image of, of the painter, in, of his head. So, the likeness, the main into the likeness of God, is when we work through alchemy. And we take the image, which are the 13 attributes of mercy, little by little in different levels. Until finally, you said, behold, there is Jesus of Nazareth, a man made into the likeness and image of God. Or Moses, or Mohammed, or Lao Tse, or many great masters, made into the likeness and image. But if we point to us, well, we say, we have the image inside but this waiting there is in potentiality. It's not in activity. The likeness? No, there is no likeness here of God in us. We are, as Jesus said, like the devil. Likeness of the devil. Because we have lust, anger, pride, vanity, laziness. No, that is not the likeness of God. That's the likeness of the devil. So we have to annihilate that likeness of the devil and to make the likeness of God. And that's a process of alchemy, meditation, annihilation. Long process. That is to be born again. Another question? Where is Peach de Sophia on the Tree of Life? Is it the angel of the Lamb? Peach Sophia is everywhere. Peach Sophia. Where is Peach Sophia in the Tree of Life? Everywhere. Peach Sophia relates to the 13 attributes. That's why it is written that Peace Sophia is the one that utters the 13 repentances. But Peace Sophia is a union of Pistis, the men, with Sophia, wisdom, Buddhi, Chokhmah. The union of Sophia and Pistis make Peace Sophia. The soul united with Christ is what the Gospels call the Son of Man. Or Jesus called the Son of Man. He's the Son of Man because if you transmute, do the alchemy, transformation, meditation, the Son that is going to be born within you is going to be in the likeness. The Son of Man. The man is Chesed. That's the true man in us, the spirit, the monad. The Son of Man is a consciousness, species of fear, united with the Lord. In different steps. That's only the first step that we are talking here. Awakening of the Kundalini. Do you have any other question? No more questions here? Yes? And you, you might have explained this already. In the, you have two diagrams of the Tree of Life up here, and on one of the diagrams you have a lot of writing in addition to the names of the Sephiroth. On the, on the very bottom, yeah, in the left is a uh, tree of life, but it's the same writing that you find on the right. The thing is that the letters here are bigger than the. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, oh yeah, yeah, well. What is all 
something written that uh, I cannot see really. It might be something related with the sephira, I mean, what is written, right? But the, what we see very clear is the black letters yes. of uh, the name of every sephira. For instance, in Da'ad, you find Da'ad there. But well, above it uh, is something written there that uh, if I have a better graphic, I will see what it is. But frankly, I can... Because the Hebrew letters, you know, are, some of them are very similar to others. Yes. And if you don't see clear, you, you can fall into mistakes. That's why it's necessary to see it very clear in order to say it is what it is this or is that. Hmm? Uh, thank you very much. To learn more about what you learned in this lecture, we invite you to explore the books published by Glorian Publishing, available from booksellers worldwide. You may also be interested in online courses or upcoming retreats, all of which you can learn about at GnosticTeachings.org. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Will you help others to benefit from this knowledge? Most spiritual schools recommend a donation of $10 to $20 per lecture. Every donation helps. Make a donation now at GnosticTeachings.org. Thank you. May all beings be happy. Yeah,